peace, peace, family. So I'm back with another one. Today what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to my chosen ones about how you will not be able to avoid all confrontations. Confrontations are going to be inevitable. So some of the best things that we can do is just understanding that you will have some confrontations. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's always a key start to just knowing like, Sometimes it's not up to you whether you fight. It's up to you whether you defend yourself or not. So if I just walked up to you and slapped you in the face and you wasn't in a fighting mood, now you are forced in a position to respond or react. You know what I mean? And that's just from a physical standpoint. But taking things from a more spiritual, spiritual, in-depth standpoint... A lot of these witchy beings that surround us don't focus their energy the way we focus our energy. So, when you are out here moving around with these witchy beings, you have to understand that you have to be really, really awesome and great at defense. You don't have to perfect your offense, but you have to be really good at defense. So, and the reason why I say you don't have to perfect your offense because your offense can be your purpose or you just walking or your way of life. You don't, you following the creator most high, you, you don't even always have to take physical action because we all understand these vessels are just being used, you know. Sometimes I look at me as like a mobile tree, you know. The trees are like the landlines and then us human vessels is like cell phones, you know. We can roam around and take our energy all over the place. You know, and we already know the landlines are more stable. They're more still. So that's what I, I used to always dance around, play around with that concept when I was younger. But the way these beings process, they don't have an identity. So they're always out to try to extract and pull different beings energy. So even if it's in a quote unquote good manner in their perspective and they don't seem harmful, yet that may be on a lower scale. But predominantly, most of the time, these beings are looking for the darker, harder, more, quote unquote, like dangerous energies and vibrations. You know what I mean? So this is why you will always have certain beings who will try to make some kind of emotional engagement to kind of get you riled up or to kind of just spark you into responding back to them, you know, because they know if they can get you to respond and they can kind of keep engaging with you to keep going back and forth with you but when you out here having these situations in some of these confrontations like the way we live our life is also unavoidable too because we are moving in our most honest light that we can possibly move in and moving that way comes with walking and projecting your light a certain way that comes off threatening to beings and then you have the way you communicate which comes off threatening to beings so i always say everything is a recipe so when you got all of this combination right here and you putting it together and then you run into some of these beings these witchy beings who don't even have an id uh, identity out here you have to understand like they are going to feel threatened and for one, they don't really have a choice because they was raised in a cult most likely where they were programmed with a lot of fear and then you got the system programming with a lot of fear. But that's at a small degree because we was all programmed as well too and we didn't operate and take the same methods and tactics that they took. So, and then we also didn't have light beings like us around trying to help and give them information and insight on what's actually going on, you know? So it's, it's always like, a catch-22 with that process so for me I just always have to understand like unless they remove that playbook or they stop utilizing that playbook then it's always gonna be some confrontation there one because they're always looking to hurt me and harm me and to extract all my energy and two because I'm always standing on my ten toes and I'm always solid in my walking way of life you know so when you have these things happening you just have to understand whether you know the people or you don't know the people, you're going to have confrontation. 
And confrontation isn't always physical violence, you know what I mean? Sometimes confrontation is just the rise up of the energy. And sometimes that is all you need, you know, because you could have a heated debate or discussion with some beings and then have to get the car to drive somewhere. And all of a sudden, because you got a little chaotic in the inside, now you kind of missing turns, running lights, stop signs. You know what I'm saying? You kind of getting a little bit more distracted because your energy is kind of a little bit more scrambled. You got to piece it back together. You know what I mean? So I was raised fighting so for me physical fighting was an easy concept when it came down to the spiritual concept and understanding why I responded and communicated outwardly a certain way it made me realize like I didn't have a choice but to have confrontations with certain beings or compromise my morals or values or be more succumbing and submissive to a certain situation you know what I mean and for me I never push people in a, in a bad or weird light you know what I'm saying outside of when I was little now we all did stuff when we was little you know like I would do something and I know my brother couldn't do it so then I would tell him he got to do it after me but I wouldn't make him do it before me I would do it first to show him that I can do it and that it can be done but I know his abilities and I know he wouldn't be able to do it, so then he would try it. And then if he hurt himself or something, you know, we, we was boys, he all right. But that's what I mean as far as, like, you see, even my witchy tactics, I still was leading. I still had to go lead and do the witchy shit first or be the example first. And then my brothers and my friends can follow suit. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, I wasn't pushing them to go do it first. And then me follow suit? Nah. It's always been the other way around. But as far as for understanding, like, for me and managing the confrontations, it made me work harder at learning how to play chess and be smarter and wiser with my moves and my engagements and understand that sometimes you got to give up a pawn in order to gain a better position, you know, to get somebody's rook or to get somebody's knight. Or sometimes you got to give up, you know, your queen because you already in position to damn near checkmate somebody or you just know how to sauce it up without your queen i can move around and play chess without my queen so i'm one of the beings that would i would fly up the board and put your queen in jeopardy with my queen so we can ah, let's get the power pieces out the way now we're gonna sit here and see who can go round for round you know what i'm saying blow for blow I, i'll do all of it i'll keep my check my queen on the board as well too you know but i just understood like once you understand there's always going to be confrontation, there's always going to be some kind of weird friction, especially when you walk in this way of life, because your walk is just confrontation itself. But then you have the other beings who are with you, so they're looking to chop your legs out from underneath you. So dealing with men, when men deal with men, and you're not trying to have confrontations, and, and you feel the energy is still rising, and this is a man-to-man -man kind of thing, you know, what I usually do is I try to figure out a way to draw a line somewhere in the process without saying, hey, if we keep going, it's going to be who got the bigger nuts. So let's figure out a way to kind of, you know, keep it at a more intellectual debate so that way it don't feel like it's one of these moments right here. Because that's one thing about men. When we have confrontations with men, we already understand that it can go to the next level. So for me, when I have those engagements, that's what I always try to, when I feel it going too far, if I don't draw it that way, I'll draw a, a, a blank slate where it's just space and opportunity and let them know that it's whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's whatever. So for me, whatever it is, is like you should already understand this energy. Like, I'm willing to go to any lengths. Not saying, like, I'm going to take off on you right now, but just saying, like, you better be reading this energy. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not, then that's on you, and that's your loss if you get caught slipping. But for men to men, you have to figure out a space and a way to draw that line so that way you understand. I'm I'm a fighter, so I'm giving it to you from somebody who's, like, a fighter. And, and like trying to process it from beings who aren't fighters but still have confrontations and trying to figure out how to move around those confrontations. That's where you just have to understand 
you have to drop your nuts at some point in time. So even if you may have risk, you have to risk physical altercation, you didn't experience it younger. So now you have to experience so you can build up that spiritual strength and endurance behind you, you know? So it's not like you have to go around taking off on people, but you have to build it up and be able to present that energy. You know what I mean? So men to men learn where to draw those lines at you know that's always something that's huge in my space because i'm like if it goes too far then you gotta show me you can whip my ass that's it's just that simple and i fight so it ain't gonna be no easy fight and i ain't saying i go around whooping everybody ass but what i'm saying is i'm pretty solid on my toes and when you got men to women friction and confrontation that's where you have to learn to be more knowledgeable because we have a system at place. So like I was just saying how men to men, we can draw that line and present that energy. It's a system in place. So if a man presents that energy to a female, it doesn't really correlate the same because they also understand that they got police, they got prison, they got protection. They got all these things that can happen after they're dead. You know, <laughs> which is always weird to me because even now I try, I want to, I teach my daughter, like, don't be raising up to the boys or to you no know, men. You come get me. You got, if you got boy, male friends and you close with them, you have them engaged, but you don't, you don't put yourself in position to do that. I don't care if you feel like you can't beat them because men are just naturally built different, but the system forces women to feel safer and protected with putting yourself in that space that I was talking about when it's man-to-man -man energy and yes you may feel okay we getting your ass whooped I know it's some witchy man out here that will put their hands on women I'm 37 I never had to so I wouldn't have a reason to start now it just wouldn't make sense to me so but I know and I had some associates that put themselves in that position and they did put their hands on females now they knew better than doing that shit around me and we kept it at limits and they know I was going to get on them if they ever tried that shit around me or I was going to cut that shit short but they do so what I be trying to tell women is I, I don't care how brolic or brave you are like you just have to be mindful and aware like yes there is police and all these things but you will be dead if a man took it to that extreme with you already so then they wouldn't have to deal with the consequences till later but you would already be taken care of so that's not always the case but i always go to the extreme cases in those manners because it's that detrimental you know a lot of people be in the house with their spouses one on one you know or with siblings who are on the witchy team so you got a brother sibling and a female sister and a brother gonna whoop your ass you know what i'm saying like it's all kind of different dynamics when it comes to male female but men when we are in that space and we're moving in our better life we understand that when that energy start doing that thing in us we usually try to communicate outwardly appropriately to the female you know either to simmer it down or let's settle it down or kind of something in that nature if it's not shut the fuck up you know it's usually something in those spaces <laughs> where you just know that it's about to go to the next level and since it's not a man you're trying to simmer that energy down but then you have the certain women who will continue to try to rise and raise that frequency and it's like That's where men, like me, I have to be aware to realize I cannot control you, but I can control me. So, you don't have to shut the fuck up, but I will shut the fuck up. You don't have to go to another room, but I will go to another room. I will, you know what I mean? Or I'll leave out the house. I'll do different things and throw different solutions out there so that way they know that this isn't going to be acceptable and especially if I don't live with them then you know, I'm gone I'm not about to sit here and be in this kind of energy in this position and I don't have to you know what I mean so and as far as women when you got the men getting on you just gotta uh, confrontations men to women women uh, I just was saying like I, I would just suck it up as an L and get out the way like all that 
back and forth right there is weird, you know, and it's putting you in a weirder space. And then it's, it's letting you know that if there is another male being in the situation afterwards, that that is a thing that will present itself instead of learning how to not do that. You have to process things as if there is no police and no system in place. The man you're picking would be your leader. You know, so we got to make sure. And even if it's just a male friend or somebody you're engaging with, you know what I'm saying? You just got to understand that men are built different than women. So I shouldn't be, if I'm a female, I shouldn't be engaging with him on that level to rouse him up. Unless I'm a witchy motherfucker and I don't care. And then I'm using me barking up and doing all this shit as being strength. That's That's not strength. That's not strength, because if there was no police involved and around, then you wouldn't be, you would be processing things differently. You wouldn't be saying, oh, I'm ready to die over not picking something up or not shutting up or doing all these things or getting kicked out the tribe or losing or the potential of losing great leadership because you don't want to shut the fuck up. You just got to show that you can bark back. We know that you guys have vocals, you know, and most men that is moving more righteously, it's going to be more respectful and understanding of that, you know. So, and that's another reason why so many witchy motherfuckers have such a great opportunity with beings like us. I'm going to move this over some into this. It's like it's getting shadier and I've been trying to juke and duck around it and it's still doing the same thing, you know. I hope that lighting is a little bit better. Um... But this is one of them subjects that is, it's not going to get any better right now, you know. So you really have to learn how to engage and manage confrontations with the opposite sex and with the same sex, you know. And you have to be understanding of the consequences of how you're responding and reacting. And you have to be aware of when to shut shit down, when something is getting too excessive and, you know, is about to make you make some decisions that you normally wouldn't make if this wasn't the circumstances, you know what I mean? And then some of them is just, maybe somebody is just pushing your principles, morals, and values too far, and this is just the universe saying, you gotta stand right now, like, I don't, I don't care how this situation transpires, you know, but following the natural flow of law and life, I would never look at a female any less of a being if, you know, she wasn't being confrontational with her being. Like, if she was with a witchy man and he said something to her and she didn't get confrontational, or she was with a man who was moving more righteously and she didn't say something that wasn't confrontational. Because in my world, that's how the natural law and flow of things is supposed to go. Not saying that you don't have a voice. You know what I mean? That's that's far from the case, but understanding like how to communicate. You know, you don't push a man until they're at that man-to-man -man engagement. That's what I'm saying. You can communicate back, but you don't push back until he's perceiving you as masculine energy. So now he's giving you a masculine energy response opposed from him responding to feminine energy. You know? So if you want to be communicated and be perceived in your feminine light then you have to communicate and engage in your feminine light but when we perceive you in your masculine light we're naturally engaging back with that masculine energy you know what i mean so just being aware we're not gonna be able to avoid these confrontations we only can tighten up and get sharper you know what i mean but i ain't want to run it up too long this bee is trying to get me tapping everything down below in the description peace and love to the kings and queens